So um, financial financial port is, is in the folder with all the other meeting um, documents. So it really hasn't changed in the last month. Okay. Uh, I always trust that. This is like the tech center. This is like I can't. Yeah. And so for the purposes of the recording, we started the recording a couple minutes late. We, we called the meeting to order. We went over the agenda. Uh, we approved the minutes and we just had a brief discussion about the financials. There's no major new news and the financial data is posted on the website. Okay. Uh, yeah, Beth, we're still in citizen comments technically. Yeah. Oh, sorry, no, we passed it as a comments, but go ahead. I, I know we did, and, yes. and I should have. That's all right, go ahead. came to me that I just wanted to give a really brief report about uh, the green and that Mondays and Sundays we are having the seats for trees. People have been there for now four weeks, and they've asked to go to the end of the month. And I spoke to, the, to Jeffrey, and he agreed, and he'll ask the trustees, but they're going to be there. The hockey team will be there. Somebody from the uh, another athletic team will be on the library lawn this weekend. And there still probably won't be enough food for folks in town. But uh, um, I think with a concerted effort and the report from the, the John Hires and Kerry Bristow back to the community, and I think that if we need to do this, if you know we're in the same situation next year, that that we should consider it, maybe consider it for more than two days. And we didn't ask for any, um, the chambers donated the tables and whatever tents if they could give them, et cetera. Yeah, thank you. We should, uh, yeah, we should thank the chamber and the group that is serving the food. I've seen, um, this is sort of my front lawn. I see the people from the buses, you know, as well as other people kind of lining up and getting food there and so forth. That's terrific. John Hires so. goes over and greets every bus and, and then asks them to there. Fantastic. John, right. can I mention just something to add to what Beth is saying? Yes, go ahead. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so there's the Trees for Peace. There is the uh, varsity hockey parents who will be on the green as well with food itself. There will be from Norwich uh, beverage, Schwitzel, Switzel uh, of some sort, Karina's Switzel. Um, uh, and then we also coming back this Monday, Sunday and Monday will also be the kebab house with food on the green. So there will be a fair amount of food on the green this Sunday, Monday. And the reason we've kept it to just Sunday, Monday Beth mentioned other days again is because of the total lack of open open food purveyors um, in the village on those two days in particular. There are other days where we have needs too, but um, those are the most predictable too. So, I want to add one other thing too, and to, to Joe's point about planning better next year. If if we're going to run short, if if we start to see the staff issues happen again. I think we need to help the restaurants coordinate so that they're not all closed on the same day. I mean, it would be very easy to say, create a schedule and so that we're not completely done. I mean, public house is actually open on Monday because everybody's closed. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, that's a very good point, Patrick. And I think, um, you know, we'll have the winter to kind of consider that. And, and, and again, I, I say we, I mean the community, because I really think that the chamber, and Beth, you and I have talked about this, I really think that the chamber has an important role to play and would be the right organization to convene th th those folks. And, you know, it's, it's, it's always a challenge, but, but um, this, yeah, it would be a great thing for the community if we, if we could do that. And if the EDC has a role, I'm not suggesting we debate that now, but if there is a role for the EDC to play, I, we should, either come up with it or be asked by the chamber or by the restaurant owners to play that role. Um, I, I, I don't know that it, what we could do, but, but anyway, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to um, create a controversy here. I think this is an issue that we should be aware of and you know, continue to discuss. So. John, okay. can I have a question for you about that? I mean, I don't think it's creating an issue. I think it, uh, I really do think you're addressing it. And last month you talked about the need for the, um, restaurants to kind of come together and have their own uh, board, you know, kind of committee and board. Um, 
is there anybody, I think maybe like you're right, it could come through the chamber. Is there anybody who can support them in creating that? Because they, I feel like they need a ringleader to help them know how to create a community board for restaurants. John, I, John, I can comment on that if you like. And then Beth, go ahead, Joe, and then Beth. Um, Alex from the butcher shop and I have been discussing it on several occasions that a Woodstock Restaurant Association be formed. Um, obviously, because of um, uh, the tremendous amount of traffic that we're having to deal with now, there hasn't been much time to uh, to develop that and, and um, to get it to get it going. But uh, I think uh, as soon as things quiet down, there's going to be some steps taken in that direction, forming some sort of Woodstock Restaurant Association to discuss and have one voice about uh, how the restaurant, for example, next year can organize and better serve the tourist influx that we get next year. Um, the, that's one of the topics, and I'm sure there'll be others, but uh, as soon as things quiet down, as I say, uh, uh, I think there'll be some steps in that direction. Beth? Well, I want to say, you know, that at the beginning of COVID, when we were meeting with both the lodging establishments, we worked on getting the restaurant establishments together. Um, maybe now with new players like Good Alex, that it, it may come to fruition because I think the lodging group has done very well yeah. as a chapter of the chamber and, mm -hmm. and talking to each other. Among, you know, amongst themselves for issues, et cetera. So I, I, I think, I think there's a, a great idea. Yeah, that's great. And I, I, I think there's a philosophical question, at least that I have, that uh, a philosophical <laughs> desire that I have that the EDC, wherever possible, can respond to a group of interested parties and experts rather than be proactively the, the group that tries to come up with a solution in someone else's area. Um, and obviously we try to collaborate and, you know, I mean, so I think you all know what we mean. And I think the stronger are, whether it's the lodging association or if it was a restaurant group or a subgroup of the chamber for restaurants or whatever it is, or, uh, you know, whether it's sustainable Woodstock or the municipal or the town government or whatever, but coming, whatever the area is coming to the EDC and saying, this is how you could support us. Um, with with these ideas uh, is is the way that we could I should ideally be operating to create the greatest leverage for the EDC and I think the events subcommittee is a working group is trying to take that approach and you know and and I think we anyway I, hopefully we can go in that direction so okay let's move on uh, it, what, Beth, to, to, what Beth said too all we did with the lodging group is because I had that uh, is we got the information from Beth uh, we sent out an email. And it's a great way to communicate. So, Joe, you might want to you might want to do that. Connect with Beth because she's got all the contact information. And we would just have regular uh, Zoom meetings uh, to figure out what was going on and how we're going to handle it. So, just FYI, how that worked. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, our first item of new business is the grant process for 2022. So. Um, Todd and Deborah were working on this and brainstorming about it. We don't, I don't have, we don't have any info from you. So can you give us, did we miss something or do you want to just give us a verbal update of where your thinking is at? I'm not sure who to call on. You both look like. <laughs> yeah, we're working together. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're partners, but, but not legally. Legally, I think is what it's saying, not legally. <laughs> right, Todd, you're breaking up a little bit. Maybe do it without video, but go ahead, Deborah. We can hear you more clearly. There you go. Okay. John, I sent something this afternoon which just has um, the first draft of the new guidelines um, that we went through. And we, um, and again, sorry guys, it's just this is between the rubrics, the application itself, the criteria, and how we are going to handle J January. Um, in go and getting it online, which is a big piece of what the piece that Todd's working on is getting it, you know, we're going to have this all online so that we are able to get data from it and really respond in a different way in the future. 
um, with some actual stats and stuff. Um, it was, it's too, was just too much to get done in one month. However, we have the guidelines and they are, um, they are reduced uh, and kind of streamlined and speaking to this moment in time, we do feel like we need to have a separate meeting with everybody um, about the criteria for this application and how we want to um, uh, divvy the money among the working groups and that perhaps that's the best way to handle it uh, coming up. Um, Todd, should I just screen share and show the, what we have for the guidelines? Yeah, I think do that? Yeah, I think, that, I think that'd be great if we can do that. I think that just to further on what Deb was saying, looking at the guidelines for 2020 and sort of being new to this um, EDC myself, I, I felt that I hear a lot from folks in the listserv or in town, of course, listserv is a soapbox, you know, but uh, what does the EDC really do? Is it, is it picnic benches or fireworks or, you know, so I think that what, what we did was we, we really just opened it up, up, up the guidelines for people that might, folks that might be interested in the grant program to answer that question uh, right away. And we took that right off, of course, the about the EDC. And we can all simply say, well, why don't people just go there and look at that? But they don't. So if they're going to want to apply for a grant, we're going to talk to them about, uh, we would like to talk to them about what our purpose is so that they understand what what things we look for and what we're hoping they can bring to the table for the community. So we, we basically uh, worked off of uh, simplifying and, and sort of making a stronger message for what could be a future template for the guidelines. And we can share that with you, our, our first draft. And I think uh, just one more thing quickly is that, you know, to that point of what is the EDC supposed to do? I've heard a lot of people, a lot of members um, talk about that and people in the community again. And, and we have to, I believe, focus on what what is chartered here, you know, the purpose. And so we put that in bold. Um, so I hope that we can take a look at that and that folks can have that question answered uh, sooner than later um, and by us and avoid a lot of confusion. And All right, so um, what one of the, John, ahead, I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to say one thing before I call it up. And if you could allow me to share my screen, I'll, I'll share it and then we'll send it out to everybody to get the discussion going. And we really do feel like this is a longer conversation. But one of the things that both, both we both felt, you know, the EDC, it's like, this is an amazing opportunity at this moment in time for a small town to have this amount of money to get really clear on how we want to help what happened over the last couple of years to really get proactive about coming up with how to, how to um, specifically um, connect to this moment in time. And so, and we really wanna also promote what the EDC is so that people in the community can get excited about this incredible opportunity to, to move their community forward. And I think that's one of the things that we wanted as the criteria that it's not just about who who's coming in are they are we looking for you know tourists or stakeholders but like what of the criteria from the edc you know does your application hit and you you have to apply and you have to hit three out of the five you know and and have that be part of the criteria and things like that so um i can show not my desktop because that would be scary to everybody right now but while you're pulling it up, Deborah. I just want to say that we're not going to. I think your proposal to for to give us time to consider it obviously is important. So yeah. we will plan to have a major discussion about this at the next EDC meeting. The implication of that for the annual meeting may be to push the annual meeting off by one month to February. I think that's the right decision. Well, John, what we were hoping is that perhaps folks we can call a special meeting, like has been called in the past. We can have a week or two to think on it, maybe discuss amongst ourselves, and then debate um, to be able to go and not potentially have to push that January deadline. So that's that's something that's up to obviously um, the uh, commission schedule, but I know we have done special meetings in the past and we would like to request that um, formally. Well, um, let's, come back, right, let's come back to that after uh, after this discussion, because there's some other things that are going to intervene. Anyway, let, let's come back, to, come back to that at the end of this discussion. Sure, I just want to be clear that I do want to discuss a motion for that in this meeting. Um, do you want me to just read this through with you and just and then move it forward? 
John? I mean, everybody, yeah, you tell us how you'd like to do it. Well, I mean, if we're all sitting staring at it, we might as well read it out loud together and then just move on. It's not its not all that long. This will take maybe three minutes to get through. Um, and um, then we'll send it to everybody. We're try we tried to keep this, a similar tone to what was already on, um, on the website, but also kind of uh, modernize it as well. So first quick bit about us, Economic Development Commission, a group of volunteers appointed to serve you and your family and the entire community. What is the purpose? And we pulled this right from the website so that we're everybody's really clear on what it is to increase number of visitors who are most likely to develop connections in the area and contribute to the economy and to grow the divert grow and uh, diversify the resident population to enrich and the quality of life. What are we doing about it to further our purpose? And again, this feels like it was buried and we need to bring it right up front. This is what we do. We are a community grants program that enables and encourages the community participants to achieve and state the goals. These are our goals would to make Woodstock livable and welcoming community for a diverse multiple uh, generation population to promote the uh, welcome the sustainable Woodstock area to improve and make the best of the lands, buildings and other uh, infrastructures to develop tools to promote a sustainable econo uh, economy. The, this is what's there. If that needs to be changed because of current climate, that's something you know that can be discussed. And obviously, John, that's up to you. But like, this is what what it, it was from the past. Um, and then it goes on to explain where the money comes from, and how is this moment different? We're we're trying to engage people in different ways on this one. Uh, how is the moment different from this time? Uh, the EDC is sensitive to the current climate, social, political, and uh, the current climate socially, politically, and environmentally. As a collective whole, we have all struggled in different ways over the last years, few years. We are aware that of our position we are in and a unique opportunity ability to make a sustainable, uh, a substantive difference in the community. Through our granting program, we can not only promote and bring people in the tourist destination, but also address the greater need to help create a thriving full-time connected community um, et cetera, et cetera. We're, we're bringing right to the front. We want people to think big and small. We want audacious ideas that challenges our community and challenges us to support us, to support them. Um, we're asking one of the ideas that we wanted to talk about was that in the granting uh, application and Todd, you can speak more to this part, um, that there actually is a way to get online and to not pre-qualify, but in a sense, there's an initial guideline to say here, this is what you need to cover in your, you know, not just get the application, but come in, tell us what you're about, tell us which of the five working groups you need to connect with so we can give you more um, information and help them and kind of pre-qualify them before they get farther down the line. And I can just interject right, right there really quickly. So what that was, what we were hearing in the last meeting was in the past that people didn't fill out the application properly, missed areas, these sorts of things. So in order to develop the application in the previous 2020, it strongly suggested uh, that strongly encourage applicants to take advantage of the optional support that you need to offer. Instead of that, I wanted to go and as I build this um, digital uh, little platform through, through Google survey or whatever, uh, so we all have access to it, it's public. But what I wanted to do was make that a requirement that there's a pre-application so that folks can come and get the ball rolling. And then Deb had an idea, which we wanted to share with you about pointing that toward the different uh, working groups perhaps that it might be most relevant for. And that gives an opportunity for folks in those working groups to directly address the people who are trying to go and work through this grant process, um, whatever that application may look like. And it allows us to be more engaged with the community in an earlier step instead of an earlier optional step um, that I think might um, do two things. One, it, it should make uh, tighter actual grant applications in terms of purpose and acceptability. And then those who realize that maybe it's not for them, um, perhaps they won't submit because they'll already uh, understand that it's, it's not actually hitting one of the areas they're focusing on our purpose. I, I have a question at this yes. point. Um, so I, I use, I, just a clarification, are you suggesting that all, all grant money will be funneled through the working groups exclusively? 
We, Deb and I wanted to bring to the table to discuss with all of you that we thought perhaps when you look at like business and there's different divisions, we feel like, like, for example, I know nothing about events. So I really wouldn't be in the position to understand how to help someone doing an events application, but there's an events working group, right, Joe? So what we were thinking was that when these pre-applications come in or whatever we might call them, if they get funneled toward those area of expertise, then we're not all sitting here wondering who should help these folks out. So we are suggesting something, maybe it's that, maybe it's a little tweaked, but we are suggesting that we, we allow these folks when they apply their pre-application to target it so that the right people on our side know to help them out and work with them on the process if they need it. Thank you. If, if they need it. Um, and one of the things that we talked about in the last meeting was that between now and when the application is due, that each working group would, in fact, you know, whether it's on listserv or wherever, say, hey, guys, we're going to do a, um, a Zoom call for events. Anybody who's interested in, in applying for an event, get on the Zoom call and we're there to answer questions, just making ourselves more available to the process to, you know, hopefully streamline and make it all work out. Um, I think you guys probably read about when it's due. Um, these were some things that were that were interesting. Todd, do you want to address these? Yeah. So, um, so the, the, we, there's rich people, there's poor people, there's in between. There's we don't know anyone's situation. I don't even know my own situation half the time. But what I wanted to think about was just a way to speak to people who look at this and can understand whether it's for them or not. Because the money, it, as as we mentioned in the previous document of 2020, we had successful grants requested from two thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars and most have around five. I remove that for discussion because I don't want to stifle anyone's good idea because we put some sort of mo uh, monetary value out there of what might be acceptable. Maybe someone has the best idea in the universe and it doesn't fall on that, but we should still hear it. So what I wanted to do and what I talked to Deb was, I, I said, look, the Tasville store, that, the country store that Angela and I are going through the process of opening, it's an expensive endeavor, but I don't feel like I would feel right if I was applying for a grant, but I'd probably fit a bunch of boxes that would go and have you check off the Rubik that we should possibly get, get a grant. So it's not that someone can apply or shouldn't apply. I wanted to find a way, and this could be a bad version, but I wanted to find a way to let folks know that, hey, if you don't really need this grant to be successful, you can still do it. We're not telling you not to do it, but just think about the other people that might need it more than you. And again, because we do have a big income disparity in Woodstock, and I don't want to stifle anyone's ideas, but I certainly don't want the grants to go to the Tasville Country Store uh, because I'm going to open it anyway without the grant. One of the things that I wanted to address with that and the conversation that we had, which is a bigger conversation for us later, um, this, the, this was our answer to the following question, which is, the EDC ideally is helping develop full-time residents who have an opportunity to make a living here in Woodstock. That's also what the housing part is doing. I mean, it's what we're trying to do is create this kind of, wouldn't it be great if with this money we created a middle class, working class in Woodstock, you know, and that they don't have to like run out of town because there's no place for them or way for them to start a business. And while that can't be an official mandate, it could be something that we, we you know, just pridefully look towards at, or it could be an official mandate, you know? So this is our first way of just kind of bringing it forward saying, do we wanna have that be a substantial part of how we spend the money coming out of the pandemic is to assist people who have great ideas but don't have the resources um, and can help build people, you know, income for people who don't have it. Um, so, or don't have the uh, business opportunities. And finally, from my, my point on the flip side is I, I took from the 2020 document who is ineligible, because I think that's really important to really lay that out. You can't do it if it, these things get checked off on a box. But in terms of who could apply, again, just to reiterate, I think everyone that has an idea should apply. And that's why I think the pre-application process, while it might sound onerous and extra work, could potentially be, and debatable, and I'd love to have the debate with you all, could potentially be a way for us to go and engage and sort of get it to a tighter application process. So we're curious on your thoughts, but what happened was to make the application and decide how to track, our, our, we were asked to go and sort of look through and how to track if these grants are successful, I couldn't answer the question, who is our ideal candidate? 
And what does the ideal grant look like? And that's okay because we don't have all the answers. We want the community to bring them to us, just like we want the restaurant association. We hope that will be formed. Please form a restaurant association. Thanks for working on that, Joe. Um, we, we want people to come to us with these ideas. And I don't want to. I don't want to lead the witness. I told Deb that I don't want to go and shove anyone in the corner. Um, so we know this is a timely thing, but it's also time consuming, and we respect that. Um, but I can tell you that once we go and can answer the question of who our ideal candidates are that we'd like and what the things the EDC truly wants to um, solve in this grant process, then I can quickly go and use my team uh, back in LA to develop a very simple public. Um, web system that we can gather all the data and from that data um, we can go and uh, build uh, the charts and graphs and find points and follow up. So that I know was what I was supposed to do, but I couldn't do chicken before the egg, but I can look that up quickly uh, once we get past our sort of first roadblocks. And if I that, if that makes sense. One, one thing to add and then we're done. One is that the pre-application is not a big thing. It's literally like here are here is what EDC is about, which of these five criteria does your project answer and, you know, you know, timeline and basic idea, you know, so it, we're not looking for a whole application. We're just wanting to make sure they're thinking in our, you know, in terms of what our goals are before we get farther down the line. Um, and then as far as the Rubik's is concerned, um, while he's working on the stuff online, I've been working on, com on a new spreadsheet that makes it just easier to mark up so that it also, you know, um, puts data in electronically as well on the score sheet and the score sheet's a little easier to read. But again, can't finish that until I know what the score sheet's about and that's a collective endeavor. And my, my last thing, because I, I know everyone knows how much I love to talk. My last thing is example, and Joe, you're, to point out your question earlier, if this goes toward the working groups, that's sort of what the pre-application if the vibe of it is, what if you someone brings you the best idea in that pre-app and you love it in the housing or, or you know, Joe's group, is, they're like, they're just digging on it. But that person that was applying, if they were left to their own own device, they, they wouldn't have what it takes to get it through the finish line properly to give us the right information to judge it on its merit in the actual application process. So what I'm hoping to do is to capture some of that. And if we get something good to be able to have the opportunity, if we have the time and choosing to work with those people to get a successful application to be graded amongst us in a public setting, but they can put their best foot forward. So that that's what this is all about. And I promise I'll stop talking now. All right. Okay, good. So we have basically a concept. Um, we we haven't yet gotten to the criteria. It sounds like that'll be at our next meeting, which goes along with this process. But let's just get reactions to what's been discussed so far. Um, first from EDC members and then from others, if there are any. Are there any comments or reactions from the EDC, Larry? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not able to really follow all that. That's rubrics and whatever weren't part of my education. I'm just curious um, in... When we went through the full process in 2019, I thought it was extremely successful. In 2020. Uh, well, yeah, I guess it was the 2020. Yeah. And and when we all met and and we we uh, uh, prioritized right. and came through the process, I think it's probably somewhat antediluvian and whatever, but it, I could understand it. And I just are, are we assuming that that process? wasn't adequate no i think we're assuming that we go this is just to prepare for that same process mm -hmm. i think i think at least i'll speak yeah no i mean what we just what we discussed last time was to go sorry as i interpret this was to kind of go over the criteria and the scoring rubric and that led to that meeting i mean it was the first time we tried to use the scoring rubric we had it but we never really used it and we actually tried to use it in that meeting. We didn't quite use it to make the final decisions, but it, it, we did actually fill in the forms. And so I think Todd and Deborah are recommending some minor. Yeah, I would call it a match and enhance. We're taking what worked and, and just knowing that some folks uh, didn't answer some of the questions they needed to, uh, to be successful in the process and, and to open it up so that uh, make KISS, keep it simple, stupid. We're gonna match and enhance and take what did work and hopefully make it work even better. That's the goal. I think, I think what they're doing, I think what they're suggesting is, if I, tell me if I'm putting, getting this wrong, is I think they're suggesting for, to, to keep the basic process, 
including Absolutely. the annual meeting. Absolutely. But to, to make four changes, as I as I wrote down the four changes. One is to have the applications be online. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. The second is to have a pre-application that would be very simple and very easy. Uh, that would simply tell us which of the five working groups the application was about. And Thank there you. are some applications, maybe many, that wouldn't fit into any of the five. We need that's, I think, a really important discussion as to whether or not we want to have a process that that goes through the working group so that we what would we do with someone comes, you know, that isn't one of the five. That's the second change. That's sorry, that's the third change. And then they're suggesting, please, they're encouraging, please give us big as well as small. I think we typically get small, but trying to encourage big, big as well as small. John, I think you're I think you're missing one thing too that I think they said, which was which I think is good, uh, is that in that pre uh, form, if people aren't quite doing it right or maybe they're not quite seeing it, that that someone would help them to help them yes. to, to understand yeah. what's the best way and, and what do we need to do. So I think that helping hand uh, is is really important. There was and, some of that, but yeah, sorry, sorry, keep going. I, I apologize. And, and I, I, the other thing I think is uh, there are will be ones that don't fit in, in the working yes. group and, and yeah. we will definitely need to plan for that. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think the idea of, of you know, don't limit your thinking uh, is is a good thought, and and that that should go through throughout everything. Uh, and if if they have helping hands along the way, uh, where they may think, oh, this is a ten thousand dollar idea, you know, it may be, hey, if you look at this a little bit differently, you really need thirty thousand dollars, and it's going to be much bigger, you know, and better for the community. So I, I think those helping hands part of this is really uh, kind of a good thing if we can if we can make that happen. Patrick, the other thing, and, and John, it, it's very simple. You have all five of the working groups say which one does it fit in, and then you have one that says other, and people explain it, and we decide as a group who we think within the group can help them. But it, it, it you know, it's kind of like us working, Michael working with the chamber last week. It was awesome. You know, it, it, it's a great feeling to support. And furthermore, I think that the working groups, I mean, we made those up, right? We said, we're going to have one in housing. We're going to do it based on what the community needs. But what, what I also want to add, and this is good stuff. Like you guys, we're here to make anything better, right? And do better for the community. Um, so I love this. That's why I love doing this with you all. But the purpose, the purpose is the stated goal. So we have to have things fall under the purpose. It doesn't mean it has to fall in the working group, right? But that's what I want folks to understand, that it's a broad area. The, the purpose isn't super narrow, right? But it's still there. And that's why I really want to highlight it for folks. And again, just to go back to, you know, just to put this point home, Patrick, if someone wants to talk about what you do for a living or marketing or, or innkeeping, you be the best person for that. Like, I don't know anything. If someone talks about making a movie about Woodstock, it's definitely me. But um, that's if we can fold that sort of into the community uh, in how we present this, I just think we could be a, even more successful. Leverage the talent. Larry, that, let me just give Larry. Does that? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, other comments or Michael? Uh, you know, I feel like we we were trying to do some of this last year. Yeah. Remember, uh, we had there was a lot of change over turnover in board members. So um, we were trying to say if someone made an application, but it wasn't a pre-application, it was actually just a, the real application, then we would direct it to uh, a committee or someone a subcommittee on the EDC, in the, someone on the EDC that would help guide them with it. But uh, I do like the idea of an easy pre-app. And, and I feel like even as a board member, man, I can't keep up with the changes. Like, I can't keep up with how much money is being spent, where, what's being directed. Like it's, I feel like we need to just have it really simple for not just the public, but also for the board. Because, mm -hmm. you know, and then when there's a lot of turnover, we got four new members, everyone's on different pages. So I think it's, it's, it would be nice to have it really simple. Uh, and I think dividing it into these different work groups is great. But at the same time, I think this might call for a change in how we distribute funds. And that's a whole nother topic, but, uh, and that we are based on what we do in January. And is that something that is still current? from even just from last year, and it may not be um, based on a lot of this, and even based on just kind of what Deborah and I have picked up with the events committee, you know, can we, we can't necessarily plan events for 2022 and have it all ready for January. 
you know, a year ahead of time. And that's the kind of thing that has to keep rolling. So that might, that's a little different. So we may have to look at trying to change some of that uh, in terms of the distribution of funds. But, but I really like what you guys are doing. And when you talk about changing it, you mean the idea of doing it all at once in one month at the beginning of the year? Yeah, and maybe that works for four out of five committees, or maybe that works for three committees. Maybe it works for housing, but not a Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. To that point, Michael, just yeah. it was Deb and I were riffing, just trying to make up what y'all might think one way or the other and arguing back and forth. And what we found was there's really no right answer. So that's why we feel like we need to have a little bit more time and try to compress it if we can, if folks can be available so we can have that riff because it's going to be a lengthy discussion to try to find out what people could be comfortable with in terms of any changes if we do make any changes. But Deborah convinced me of a bunch of stuff in our fake conversation that I was like, oh, I could see that. And, and I think that as a, the EDC, we owe it to people to, to really hammer it through and then get on the same page and move forward as best we can. And I'll tell you, like some people on the thing I don't always agree with, and I go home and I was like, oh, that does make sense. You know, so that's the thing. We didn't want to come out and pitch something super complex or this or that. We just want to make it better. So I do hope that we can go and find time to have another meeting uh, before our next month. Um, just to riff on this discussion because it's complicated and we want to we want to make sure we get it right if that's possible because that's what we're here to do. But other uh, other comments from anyone, either EDC members or anyone else? Yeah, um, this is Mika. I just want to say I think it's great work and uh, I think going back to what Patrick said earlier, I think the part that I like about it the most is just the the extension of the helping hand. I know that grant application, just the word grant application is really overwhelming for people sometimes. And I think that having, you know, a friendly face or even not friendly, but just having somebody <laughs> sitting down with them and, and going over what the criteria is, maybe some possible, you know, as, as you've already said, maybe some possible other outcomes that maybe they weren't thinking of. Um, I think that it would mean the world and, and might actually really increase the amount of applications that we're getting in. So I, I really love it. And I appreciate that you guys did all that hard work. Um, Mika, I also wanted to just say, I was thinking about that when, as I was hearing people talking about the pre-app, 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 and like even something as simple as saying, you know, um, uh, grant inquiry, like you have to go through a grant inquiry first, as opposed to a pre-app, you know, like do yes. things. Have it set in a way that doesn't intimidate people and that it continues with the helping hand. So exactly. anyway, things like that. Yeah, I agree. That's a great idea. I mean, anything you can make it not feel scary. Right, right. Any, um, any other comments? Joe's got his hand up. No, He's no, adjusting his adjusting the light. <laughs> oh. Are you raising your hand because you're sure? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to the bathroom and stuff. So. <laughs> I think that it, personally, I think the um, the changes that you're suggesting, certainly uh, having it be online, I think would be a nice step to take. Um, uh, I think tying the working, tying the grants to working groups while still allowing for another category is a, a, a good next step to take. I think it does get us focused it would potentially, I'm a big proponent of the once a year approach because I think it lets us prioritize better than if we do it all along. However, I do think there's a difference to take two extremes between housing at one end and events at the other end perhaps. And so I can see Michael, your point that, that if we, I think that going through the working, and I, I say going through the working groups, that doesn't mean that the working groups will make the grant decisions. I still think we have an annual meeting and I still think the entire EDC is there, but, but working, the process of working with grantees around working groups where the, where the grants relate to working groups is something that I think helps us to focus and helps us to get the message out. So I, I like that concept if we can make it work. I think the idea of a pre-application or something is, it goes, I support that too. I think that's a good idea. I want to just make a, I think the process implications of this is really just a scheduling implication. I really think that we shouldn't rush this, whether we have a special meeting or not. I think we, we have to, we obviously have to have more discussion about two things. One is I think you need to give us time, everyone else time to digest what, what you've just raised and for us to have another discussion. And we need to talk about the criteria, exactly. which 
uh, Deb Deborah described and and which in the end actually has maybe even more to do with which things we pick than what we've just talked about, which is really just high level process. Yeah, who who is our ideal applicant? What what is their vibe? What are they offering in the application that has to say this is a great application? That's that's something I really think we need to be able to answer as a group. Well, and I think that comes from the criteria. I would build it up exactly. anyway. Yeah. We have it. We have a set of criteria for both events and non-events for, for right. grants. For those of you that remember remember that, and I think we need to discuss that and so forth. And I think that takes time. It doesn't take calendar time, but it takes EDC meeting time. So yeah. I, I'm going to suggest we can come in a minute to the Joel call you in one second. We can come in, in in a minute after we have the second discussion about whether or not we have this discussion at the next EDC meeting or at a special EDC meeting, but I think we need to give the community, you know, three months from when we decide this to two or three months when we decide this to probably three actually to 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 uh, complete the process. So I just don't want to rush it. I don't see that there's any big difference if we have our annual meeting in the first week in January, or the last week in February. I don't think we should have it in June. But um, so anyway, let's come back after we have the next discussion, if it's okay to talk about a special meeting, because there already may need to be a so let's just discuss it after we have the second discussion that that's fair. my my just just quick my my only thought on this is that i just don't want to, want to wait 30 days to be able to talk to you all about it and riff and try to move it forward that's all and, and then the meetings are how we all get together but yeah whatever we do is fine i just i just don't want to stall you know i'm i you know me well one thing that we could do well you know let's let's deal with it now then uh, one thing that we could do is to have a discussion, let's say in two weeks' time, where we would, where you would re review the review the criteria, rediscuss this, and then come to a final decision two weeks later. So we have two two-week periods. What I'm what I'm nervous about here is, and this is a problem. I'm nervous about everyone else doing what I do, which is to wait till the last minute to put up the agenda and so forth. It's fine if I do it, but if you guys are doing it, then you know you can't do that. So. I mean, kidding aside, we need time to digest this. I've, I've set a terrible example by not distributing documents well in advance. I'd like to change that, but I'd like you, I'd like to change it with this also so that we have some time to yeah. do it. I couldn't agree more. I, I, wanted, I wanted to say, again, we were working on, on, these were a lot of documents and we all have jobs too, but the, yeah. these three documents were really heady. And so again, we will get better at that and about getting it to people. But um, I just wanted to say the criteria I have it, I, I could get that to people within a week to give people a week to review it before we talk about it. So I've, I've kind of taken all of the rubrics that were, was done and I can get it to people in, in a okay, simple Okay, so you way. need a week and, and we need a week. So yeah. are, people, are people on the EDC comfortable with assuming that Deb, Deborah hits that target? Are people comfortable with a week and having an interim meeting in between, ideally two weeks from now-ish? to discuss what we've just talked about, plus to talk about the criteria and basically entirely focused on the grant process for 2022 and to, yes. and to make a decision, either, either make a decision about the process then, again, this decision doesn't have to be approved by the select board because it's not a funding decision, we can just decide. So we either come to agreement on it or we'll have another meeting two weeks hence where we could finalize it. So it gives us, a, we're in a good position to come to a decision by November. We can then have a discussion about when we want to set the date for the annual meeting because we'll immediately publish, let's say we come to agreement in the worst case on November 3rd or 5th or whenever, we'll publish it right away within a few days. And then we give people you know, three months and we'd probably have a meeting in mid-February, something like that. Larry, you look concerned or you're wearing a mask. I can't tell. <laughs> no, I was just thinking of the... For me, anyway, it'd be helpful. I've just got to go back through my materials. You distributed at one point um, all the grants that we'd given out. I'd like to yeah. look at those in light of whatever the the criteria that's coming down the pike, and just see how they how they fit. Absolutely, and in fact, they are. Sally, is it correct that that the list of the names of every grant we've given is in the is in the material every month that's posted yeah. in the on the website in the financial report? That's it's actually true. the full. Yeah. It's not the, not the day has, application, but from day one. Okay. Right. Sorry, Sally, I'm cutting you off. Could you yeah. say what you said? Yeah. The financial report has all the grants that were awarded and all the funds that have been dispersed for each one of those grants. 
Okay. Yeah. Since day one. It doesn't have the whole app. It doesn't have 12 pages, but it says, you know, um, the, the nursery or, okay. you know, the most. What I, I guess I, all I'm saying is and, I'd like to look let at me both just, compare Larry, those, the criteria. Yeah. Here. Right. Larry, why don't we send you all the things that we're working with so you don't have to go hunt and peck for it? We could give you, send everybody all the documents that we've been riffing off of and creating out of um, so that you see what, we're, what we started with and where we're going. Sally? And I believe that in the EDC Dropbox are all the applications that I had at one point. So um, they should be all available in, in the EDC Dropbox if you, and you should all have access to that. Yeah, actually, in the 2020 guideline doc, which I put in my one, that you can request links to uh, view any of the previously successful applications below. So I imagine those do exist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they should they, be there. And if they're not, I, I will make sure they are. Joe, I think you had a comment. I may have forgotten to call. I, I just, uh, you answered my question. I, 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 I think this certainly is worth further discussion. And I would like to see. Um, what everything that they're talking about so I can chew on it a while before the next meeting. That's, and I, okay. I think a special meeting for this is warranted. I think it's important and it should be, you know, exclusively one meeting. That's my, my concern. Okay. Is, is there any DC members who object to that process one week? Hopefully we'll get material. We won't, we will give, if we don't get it in a week, we won't schedule the meeting. We'll schedule a meeting a week after we get the material ish. I hear you. I will get it to you in a week. With uh, a week. <laughs> putting a little yeah. pressure on Deborah. One thing, yeah, no, and... too, uh, one thing to keep in mind with this, you, you guys are doing a great job and, and it's it's amazing too. And, and we should also think that it doesn't have to be done all at once. You know, it, it could be that we do a good part of it now and then plan to take the, you know, something that might be more difficult, take too long, you know, in the next time. Uh, to, to do it, uh, you know, so uh, instead of taking one big, huge step that might be difficult to do, you know, take three quarters of a step, you know, and then another quarter next year. So just, you know, as a thought. Yeah, it's a great point, Patrick. I mean, I think that for me, like the riff of if we get, get together, like Joe, Joe's in favor of as well, I think, I think it'd be great because we can just hash it out and then see what's possible and see what we have time to do and what can, what can make it work. And if it's not possible for this period, when well, we know John, will remind us about it for the next year. So uh, we just, we just, yeah, we're all on the same team. We just want to try to make something better and easier for folks. So whatever you guys all can give for time and energy, I appreciate it. I'm excited about this and I wish I was here and was at that 2020 meeting because just think about how cool it is for someone for town to be able to receive uh, money, either $2,000 or $30,000 and be able to put something that they had in their mind to fruition. That's just, that's super awesome. And it, it fits in with what the purpose of the EDC is, and I'm just really excited about being a part of this. Okay, great. Any other, any last comments about this issue? I think we have our process set. You guys okay? Yeah. No one raising their hand. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is the, a new, uh, or two, we have two new items, sorry. Uh, one is the input to the town plan that Patrick raised. I mean, that Sally, I think, raised. And, and actually, Sally had raised this before. And I think I had promised that we would do something about it. And I at least didn't do anything about it. Um, Patrick, did you want to say anything? Or were you just the conduit to remind us that this is something we have to try to uh, do? I, I think I'm more of the conduit. Uh, I, I, I think it's uh, something that we should definitely get on the, the, the list, uh, get in front of somebody to, to take care of. Uh, and I think for both so the the economic development aspect of it and the housing part of it, because both of those, I think, Sally, correct me if I'm wrong, are are pretty out of date at this point. Well, and I think I also promised to put them, um, make them available to the EDC members, and I have not done that. So I will make sure that I um, send you guys all a copy of the town plan. It is a long document, but I will um, highlight the, the sections that are important. And the, the Planning Commission will be talking about this for the next few months, but it would be great to get any sort of input and comments. Um, again, we try to go to people that have more knowledge and they can guide the same way as the EDC, that we can get people who are knowledgeable to guide us and help us write these, um, the town plan, which is a, you know, supposed to be a, a looking to the future document. 
And Sally, share share with them too, because I think it's important. Uh, the reason why we're looking at the whole document and that the, what the deadline is, because I think it has to do with economic development stuff. So one of the reasons we're 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 updating it is to actually for the Tasville Country Stores, we're looking at making a historic district in Tasville, um, which will allow them to apply for some the village designation rather than excuse me not historic village designation like what we have um, in the downtown area for Tasville, which will allow them to apply for some state grants and get some potential um, financial assistance and tax incentives. Um, but also that when we rewrite the town plan, I always say that we're looking at it as a, um, a document that's forward thinking. It helps us guide our zoning and other planning documents. But I also use it to refer to when we're applying for grants, especially at state and sorry, I've got a cat. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> always when I'm talking. Um, so when we're applying for state or federal funds, it's an, a document that you can reference and say, you know, we, our community has said that these are important to us and they actually carry quite a bit of weight. Um, it, we're fortunate that we have uh, on these two sections of the town plan, we have a working group on housing. Yep. So yep. Jill, uh, would, would it be, um, would it be possible for the housing working group to be the group that reviews that part of the town plan and then brings, brings a brief recommendation back to the EDC, the full EDC? It, it's, um, sure, we can add it to our agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the appropriate group to do it. The other one is, um, yeah, I mean, it's much more I, general. The thing is that the you'll find that when you read it, it's not, it's not, it it doesn't have a lot of action in it, and it's very sort of specific about looking at infrastructure and you know the way the community is is laid out and things like that. I think there's a whole different approach that we could have for um, the economic development chapter of the town plan. So I'll yeah. send it around and you guys can take a look at it and the planning commission will be glad to take any comments. And as a matter of fact, we may just invite some EDC members to come to a planning commission meeting um, and have that conversation. Might be the easiest way to do it. You, you know the almonds will be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to some, to some extent, the work that Todd and Deborah have done, which it really to, uh, to some important portion is really simply restating and reminding us of words that we've written in the past. Mm -hmm. But having those words and those concepts reminded of, you know, to us tonight really could form the basis for the kind of statements we want to make in a town plan as it relates to economic development and should actually. If it was radically different from what they shared with us tonight, it would be a bit concerning. Mm -hmm. So perhaps, I mean, to some extent, there's been a lot of work over the years and thought and writing you know, to come to that, I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's pretty good. So maybe we can um, use some of our discussion around, you know, in a, just indirectly use some of our discussion over the next month or so and, and, and repurpose some of that verbiage into the town plan. So let's see how that goes. Okay. All right, Patrick. Yeah, one last question. What's, what's the deadline? When, when would this need to be done just so we have a sense of where we draw the line in the sand? Um, so we're, we're aiming, because of the Tasville um, project, um, which is the deadlines for those grants is, are next July, which seems like a really long time, but the review process for town plan takes several months. So we're hoping to actually complete this by February or March of um, yeah, next year, really. So we have about three or four months that we can really sort of get into this and talk about it. And then we have to have public meetings. The, Planning Commission has to approve it, then it has to go to the select board, and they have to have public meetings as well. So, so it's actually a fairly involved process, but I think we can do it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Then the second uh, item of new business is to consider two grant proposals that are in, tied together to support Wassel. Um, and just so to support Wassa Weekend. This is from the events, the newly formed events working group and, and trying to get something done this year. Um, I just want to say so that people aren't worried about the, the, the making a decision on this tonight, because in fact, I think people online, do they have copies? I'm confused. Do, do EDC members who are, on, who are not in this room have copies of the proposal? Yes, they do. Okay, they just received it. So, 
All right. Well, I think that, again, going back to this point about it, again, I have set the worst possible example, so I'm not blaming it, but I, but now that it's being done to me, I can understand why it's a pain in the neck to not know what's coming down the pike. So I'm going to commit to try to get stuff out more in advance. I think here, what we may need to do is to have a special meeting uh, to discuss this because the timing of this is, is for Wassel this year. And if we're going to plan what, what they're asking for, we need to do it. We can't wait until February to do something that needs to be done in December. But we're not going to decide tonight whether to spend this money. We're, we still have time if we were to have a quick meeting. We're going to have them explain the proposal. Um, we'll digest it. I mean, if everyone is unanimously in favor of it, it's fine with me. We can decide tonight. But if we need a little bit more time to think about it, we can have a quick special meeting next week, still be able to get it to the select board if we decide to go down that route. And I don't think it would need to be a long, it's not nearly as complicated a discussion as the other meeting that we talked about having. So we're kind of overloading the agenda here, but I think from a time commitment point of view, this will be modest, perhaps. Let's see how the discussion goes. So uh, Michael is working on the events working group and Beth, the proposals from the chamber. So if you want to just yeah. explain to us, and Deborah. Oh, Deborah, sorry, of course, and Deborah. So if you want to explain to us what the proposal is, and then we'll have some discussion. Um, sure. So with it, it's kind of hard because we have events coming down later in the agenda. So um, but our, you know, our focus Deborah, would you I mean, rather would you rather do it then? I mean, what's your preference? It's, it's kind of all tied in together. I, I don't want to just talk about a proposal without talking about events. So why don't you why don't you talk about events and then and then we'll discuss. Now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So do your update yeah. and this. Proposal. So I'll do the update now. So uh, Dev and I've been meeting. I mean, we've been working really hard about trying to figure out, you know, what is the events, what, what's our goal of the events committee, and to kind of sum it up and make it relatively brief. You know, we understand that our our job isn't to create events, but it's to bolster existing events and help new events that uh, are brought to us, you know, come to fruition and and, and be successful. So we've really thought about what's what's existing in town, and there's Wassel, right? There's a half marathon. We've got July Fourth. There's Bookstock. There's the Arts Festival. Those are those are the main ones um, that are right right in Woodstock. And you know, just sitting and going through the list, we understand that yeah, they're great events, but they, they could be greater and 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 have a lot more community input, a lot. More excitement around them and you know for example Wassel's coming up real quickly and that was the one that we've been focusing on because it is two months away right so um and I've been here for seven years and what, what, what does Wassel mean to me it means the horse parade around the green and after that I know there's a supper somewhere in the inn and there's singing acapella singing in a church somewhere and maybe there's a, you know some Christmas caroling going on at Pentangle I think that's kind of what I know, but I, and that's all I see after the parade, everyone kind of disperses and they're gone. There, there's a home, home tours as well. So, you know, our, our key with Wassel, we met with Beth uh, and, and said, hey, what can we, you know, what can we do to, or what would you like to see and what would we like to see and other people's input to, to make this a bigger event for the community, not just for tourists, but for locals as well. Uh, and Beth showed us her list of her planning list and what she's done and man they, they've got a lot going on and they're spread really thin and they've got a very 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 tight budget so in comes the events committee and this is i think where we can help them and say hey well here's some other ideas and and maybe we can help get some volunteers to do these things that you guys don't have time for because you've clearly got enough on your plate um so to to kind of figure this out this is a grant here for 2020 wassail and uh, the goal for Wassel is not just, it's not this year, we're looking towards 2022 to make it a bigger event. We've, we've met with uh, Courtney, we had a good discussion with Courtney from the Woodstock Inn, and their vision is to turn Woodstock into a month-long holiday Christmas market winter festival, doing it over a month's period. And, and Beth's like, I would just like to start with a week and see if we can get that done because there's so much planning involved. So that's kind of where what this grant proposal is, it's a few things that we think will transform and have a huge impact on this event this year. And if they stick, we do it bigger and better next year. And then we add other things. Um, so to go over this one, what I'll, I'll talk about fire pits 
um, Deb, and then you can kind of go in the uh, over the, the costume. So uh, one vision is to have multiple fire pits throughout the village going on the weekend. So we're starting on the weekend of the 4th of December, again on the 11th, and then again on the 18th. So there's three separate weekends where we're thinking about four to five fire pits sped, spread through the village. And we also get a cord of wood uh, and someone's dropping the fire pits off Saturday morning light, or Saturday lunchtime, lighting them off and they're stacking some wood for the day at each spot. Um, we also have someone who's going to monitor to them. This grant covers someone paying someone to actually monitor the fire pits, not every second of the day, but throughout the day to make sure they're clean, make sure they're safe uh, and make sure there's enough wood there. Um, so that's the thing that is going to help people who are out shopping. They can stop and they can warm up. At the same time, we're going to be selling bags of s'mores so people can buy them, go to the fire pit and roast them. Uh, the vision is to have fire pits, maybe four stumps, so people can sit and warm up along each one. Um, and so again, the grant covers all that. You can see, read about that in the detail in the email. Uh, Deb, you want to talk about the costumes? Sure, I'm going to try to be a brief. I know it's, go, it's running long. Um, uh, ideally, it, basically what we're trying to do is make it destination for the whole month of Wasail and, and get the vibe. So if you have fire pits all over and four to six people walking around in costume who are interacting with the merchants, who are interacting with people, um, it creates a vibe. Um, we talked to uh, Sally, excuse me, uh, Beth about creating the hashtag, you know, Woodstock Wassail Vermont and really uh, trying to drive that home because it would be something that people would be taking pictures of and it gives the whole town that really sweet feeling that is our town, right? And so um, that's what we're doing. And we found, um, I found a, a, some place to rent them from that does all of the Boston parade. So they're really beautiful um, outside yeah, costumes from the 1800s um, for a very good price for the month, like $75 a piece. And we'll work with Pentangle and other arts organizations to put those scenarios together. And also, I want to bring on a couple of students from the theater department at Woodstock what? High, uh, at Union High, so that we can um, make it a learning experience and work with the um, historic uh, museum as well. Um, so it's just an all around great experience for the town and for people in the town. Um, so that's that essence, that piece of it. And the third thing on this grant proposal is bringing back the horse and carriage rides. So um, we have it, there's a typo in here, it says for eight days, but it's for six days. So it's three weekends, the same, the same three weekends, we can get the horse and carriage ride around the green uh, or through the village. That's uh, again, adding to the vibe. And the total, yeah. And so the total request for all of that is 8,500, 8,600 roughly. Um, and it's, it's documented in the email that's been, that's been sent out. Um, and then I, do you want to talk about the other one? It's more infrastructure related, or do you want to just get some feedback on this first? I see we get feedback on this one. And, and, the, and the second one you're talking about is for what lights and lights and buses. Yeah. I haven't seen that one, but okay. All right. So let's just talk just, to that. Let's just get some general feedback on this. Any comments or thoughts about, about this? I, I have a quick question. I, I, I like the ideas a lot. Um, but with I just had a you know, quick clarification. So for the, the fire pits on the days that they're out there, will they be there into the night or, or how long will the fires be going for? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we're thinking probably just until maybe seven o'clock. So it goes into darkness and people can actually enjoy it at night and then they're out. So it's going to be limited by how much wood is there. And I'm sure it, you know, it depends on how fast it burns, but I, I think we're going to have to resupply the wood at least one more time during the day. Um, and so whoever's uh, paid to do that is going to keep an eye on it and then they'll restock it. But these aren't, these are not going all night long. Uh, we've cleared it through the fire chief. Um, we have to go through the village development review board for placing the fire pits in certain areas. I already have I've met with Neil 
He spoke with the BDRB last night and they were really supportive of the idea, but we're putting together an application for locations. Um, I believe there's, and Jeff might know the answer to this, there's, we do not need to go through BDRB to put uh, a fire pit on the green because that is uh, something that has to go in front of the trustees. Is that correct, Jeff? That's, cor that's correct. Okay. Do you have an idea of what locations you're considering? Uh, yeah, so far, so we're thinking the um, that spot right where Pi used to be, uh, that's one spot. Another one is potentially by the town crier. Um, and then one maybe over in that corner by People's Bank in the library, uh, and then the green. The spot by, uh, the, Todd, the spot by uh, Pi is private property. I mean, we can ask those people. I have contacts for them. That's that how we got the picnic tables out there, but we, we can't do anything without their uh, permission. Okay, yeah, so that, I mean, that's one thing, and there's always a World War II park. Um, one idea was for the, um, for the, for the Saturday of Wassail is have one over by the chamber where the new brasserie is going to go, because I know Zoe's going to be serving hot chocolate there that day. And she wants to have a fire pit and she can always add her own there too, on her own property. Uh, so, but those are areas and we're open to more ideas. If you have a, an idea for a location of that. Any other comments? Yeah, this is Mika. I think it sounds great. Nice work, guys. Um, yeah. I, I would be in full support of this. I think it's it's exactly what we needed. And, and this is I, just, just for the weekends, correct? Yes. Saturday, it's Saturday. Weekend, except um, on a uh, sale weekend, it will be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. On the 11th, that's the 10th, 11th, and 12th. Yeah. So Jeff, uh, Todd, and then Jeff, did you want to say something? No, oh, Todd. I think it sounds super awesome. Like, you know, it, it sounds, I've got zero things to say negative about it. It's awesome. I, I have a quick comment. I, I would be, I like this. I like these ideas. I, I like the ideas a lot. I think they're very much in the spirit of trying to take events, very much in the spirit of the purpose of the events committee as you defined it. I think that's that's right on target. I would feel, I would feel much more comfortable. I would still support it, but I would feel much more comfortable if there was some group in town that was coming to us. It goes back to the philosophy that was coming to us and saying, we have this idea that we'd like to do. And it's, I know it's granted from the this chamber, chamber, maybe. John, okay. is this coming from the chamber? It is coming from the chamber, but does the, the, does the, does the chamber have volunteers and resources or, or that you will line them up to do this well, and and yeah. if you do fantastic no deborah and i talked about that today so that's one of my i have several comments one is that um i didn't realize that we were going to go for three weeks or three weekends when i, I mean i knew we talked about it yeah um but i thought we were going to go for a week you know a once a week to begin with so maybe the first weekend to the second weekend or the second weekend or the third, whatever. Um, I wonder if we might reach out to the Boy Scouts who have a very active, I mean, there's, they're, they're very active and have Eagle Scouts, several, um, as, as a group that the EDC may donate to and they could be in charge of the fire. You know, we'll, we'll provide the pits. You know, and that's that's just something that's come to mind. The other thing is, I would like to work with some of the merchants to see if, I, you know, I threw it out. Baby Montbert Cafe does a hot chocolate and gingerbread special during the week of Wassel Week, so that you know you go in there, or so it's the driving people to merchants in between the weekends. Mm -hmm. You know, some there's a ladies' night, there's a men's night, there's you know some of these things, so that we're not just promoting Woodstock on the weekend, but we're pro promoting shopping or visiting stores during the week, and that would that would enhance Wassel 
What do you guys think? I, I, um, I think I mean, those all sound like very interesting. I, the other thing is, is the horse. The, the horse thing, we did talk, um, you know, we kind of came with that idea because Pentangle is not doing the house tour. House tours. And that's kind of when the magic happens is when the horse starts drive, riding through town with the bells on. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's holiday time. And that's kind of that's kind of starts the the hallmark feel of, of Woodstock. Mm -hmm. So well, I the, I think the, the, it's the idea kind of of staffing an event and that it's it I, what I am afraid of is that it 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 you know, I'm imagining the article in the standard, EDC lights fires in four places around town. And then, you know, someone doesn't come back for four hours and, you know, someone takes a burning log and throws it onto the road and, you know, uh, uh, burning tires and, you know, who knows? Anyway, obviously I'm exaggerating, but it, it feels a little, it, it feels a little last minute and, and understaffed. And so one of the, John, one of the I... benefits, well, let me just finish, is that from a process yes, point yeah. of view, let if we if we understand the basic idea, and it seems like there's strong there's strong support across the group. I mean, everyone who's spoken about it, including me, I like this idea. I think it would enhance Wassel if it's executed properly. Maybe we can take if we since this is involves funding, and I don't want to make a decision because we didn't get it in advance. If we could have a short twenty to thirty minute meeting a week from now, if in that intervening week the chamber and the Boy Scouts and whoever, with a helping hand from the events committee, because that's the role is to foster and to help the hand, figure out, make sure that we're clear about the staffing and that it's it's gonna be implemented properly. Then we can just, then if you can come back to us with that and any refinements you have like two weeks versus, you know, the difference in the timing, work that out. I don't know that we need to have that in advance. I think you can present that at the next meeting if my colleagues are uncomfortable with that at the EDC. And then we can make the decision a week from now. It, 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 now, I'm not, it doesn't have to be the process. We could decide tonight. We can. No. Sorry, Deborah. And Deborah, you had, I cut you off there. But, or, well, I just, I wanted to respond to your, your like, well, are, what's the role of the um, events committee right. and where are the ideas coming from? And I think um, ideally, what we want to do is we want to offer help and then it, it it's up to the organization to decide what they want to do. So yes, the ideas were generated as a collective, but also we have to understand whether these organizations can handle, like what you're saying, can they handle the idea? You give them the money and they can't handle the idea, then it's it's not good. So for instance, in this scenario, you know, I'm volunteering my time to coordinate the costumes with Pentangle and the high school and calling all the other organizations around like artistry and other, you know, JAG, I would like to bring in JAG, all of those kind of things, but it's not us, it's us helping somebody else. Um, and I absolutely agree about the fire thing that, uh, you know, liability, 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 we have to be really careful about all of that stuff. Um, well, but just from an optics point of view, Deborah, for what you just described isn't helping someone else, it's, 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 you know, you doing it and doing those things. And I, I think you'd be terrific at doing those things. I, I, I don't have a, it just does raise- I don't have it. to do it. Somebody no, else no, can no, do no. it. No, 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 I think you, I, I'm not, I'm not, maybe I'm the only one that's concerned about no, this. No, 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 I, I guess I'm- I, I think Deborah has a great deal of expertise. I would love for you to do it. It's just that I'm- I, we, I'm not getting paid for it. I'm just volunteering. I understand. Well, we are, we all are. Right. right. Yeah, on the weekend. Exactly. But I was concerned about that, but I assumed that there were other people. If it can only be a week, and I'm happy to try the week, and maybe we don't make it three weekends, maybe it's two weekends. Well, you don't have to resign. Sorry. And, I, and I'd like to have that discussion. Yeah. Because I, I so. I guess my point is that if we're going to give. If, so it will certainly come down. If we're, if we're going to give a grant to the chamber, then we have then 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 you Beth as the chamber have to say, this is your money. If there's a fire, it's your problem. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to cover our ass, but basically that's you know it's the same thing when we give the nursery school fifty thousand dollars. They have to you know hire the people and and do all that stuff. So you've got to just make sure that you have a plan. If your plan is 
to use someone like Deborah as a volunteer who has great expertise in this area, that's fine. Uh, th that I think you know works. Um, but but I would just like personally, I would just like to make sure that the operational plan, sorry, that the chamber's operational plan for this is solid and something that we're comfortable with. And I think it can be. I think John, if you don't if you don't mind, I think yeah. Beth, Beth are you, if we if we give it a week, I mean, a week's fine, I think, right? It's a great idea. If we give it a week, then Beth, you can come back and sort of inform us if you think there will be a staffing issue or you think you can't pull something off so we can make the decision on the funds and, and vote yay or nay. I think that's great. I mean, I don't know what everyone else thinks, but I think, John, I agree with your point. I hadn't thought about it because it sounded so awesome. I was just like, I'm going to be there, but I don't want to volunteer for that. I'm going to drink all the hot chocolate instead. But but it's true. Like, Who's going to do it? So can you guys can we work on that and come to us with that information on on your success rate of getting people to staff the various positions and then we make the vote then. Yeah. yeah. And I think would you same. prefer so, that we help or help get the idea forward and then step away? So it's like no. okay, we got the idea forward and we're gonna just step out of it now. Well, well, Is that well, better? No, no, not necessarily. I, I just I don't I, I think it's ambiguous. It, I think if 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 you I, I, I think it, I think the ownership of the event needs to be unambiguous, not the funding of the event, but the ownership of the event needs to be unambiguous. If the EDC is a partial owner of the event by whatever means, then I don't think we're, then we need to do something very different. We could do that, but we're not prepared to stop fires in the village on four week on three weekends as a committee, we could become prepared for that. But you know, uh, we don't uh, have insurance, for example. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> like we kind of have to do some things different. So the ownership has to be unambiguous. If the chamber owns it, it doesn't mean that people on the EDC can't be involved in the idea generation, it's fantastic, or the doing, that's fantastic too. But the ownership of it and the line of responsibility and authority has to be clear. And to me, I'm just nervous, just given the nature of the discussion, that it isn't quite yet clear. And I, I just like it to be. And I just want to know if this is an EDC co-owned project as opposed to fund it. I'm happy to fund, personally, I'm happy to fund it. John. <laughs> but if we're co-owning it, then, then that's different. And I would like to, I'd much rather fund something that we don't own. Okay, John. Uh, yeah, so yeah, Patrick, go ahead. Uh, I, you know, I, 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 I get your point. And I think the simple solution for that is hire somebody that is connected to the to the chamber, the chamber hire somebody. I think the other thing we need to think about this, and I think Beth, you made a very good point which is what's the real goal here aside from making the town you know great at christmas is to help the businesses make sales so i think that some of the thought should be if we do this for a week you know is that going to is that gonna, that may be harder to do or if we hire somebody it might not be but my my goal would be or my suggestion on this would be you know wassel right now is is a weekend so now we make wassel week you know, or we make Wassel weekends or, you know, or, or Christmas weekends with the idea of promoting come to Woodstock and experience the Christmas town and, and shop at all our wonderful shops. I think we need to have that economic component to it if we're going to expand on this. So, you know, it might be easier to look at this from the standpoint of the chamber hires people to do all the things we're talking about. Uh, you know, we do it for a week, make it Wassel Week instead of Wassel Weekend. And, and then maybe the next year we go to Wassel Weekends with Wassel Week, you know, but look at it, take one thing and let's see if we can make it happen. But let's not necessarily worry about who's going to volunteer and who's this, you know, if we're going to really make this a real thing, then we need to hire people. And I think we let the chamber own it. Uh, and we, we look at funding, you know, having people guard the fires having you know the the actors and stuff walk around make it a real event i mean how cool would it be if you're if you're around woodstock and you've got people walking up to you in these costumes handing you candy canes you know wishing you merry christmas and yeah. you know all those kinds of things like that it'd be very cool but i would i would say let's contain it so that we can promote it either as weekends through december or once a week uh, because i'm from a marketing standpoint i'm going to look at this as you know, how do we get people to come to Woodstock to, to shop and to experience once a week? And stay on Wednesday night as opposed to right. just Friday and Saturday. 
Exactly. Make it, make it, a, make it a point to make it, you know, you're going to come for the week. And the idea, could you imagine for a week having the, the horse uh, carriage going around? How cool would that be? So I think you guys came, I think it's a great idea, guys. I think yeah. you, you're thinking the right way. I think now we just need to say, okay, let's put our marketing hat on because yeah. ultimately that's what we're trying to do is economic development in Woodstock. All right, are there other comments, Joe and Larry? You don't have to comment, but you haven't said anything. A any thoughts? Um, I think it's a great idea to expand on on a great idea. I mean, the, the the initial great idea is lost the weekend, and to expand on that and to um, put a little fertilizer and water on it and let it grow a little bit, I think is 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 wonderful. I think, as presented, if you. I, I foresee a staffing problem, point one, and um, to follow up on Patrick's point, I think it's a good idea to walk before you run. So this year, probably try it for a week, see how it works out, and then I expand on it again next year. Uh, there's there's still a lot of things I think that can be done and expanded. Uh, expand the current format um, to make it bigger and better, but confine it to a week or maybe two weekends and a week in between. Uh, I think a month is a stretch right now, initially anyway, but maybe not next year or the year after. Um, principally because you really don't know what's going to happen yet. And if you, if, and I think staffing is going to be a real issue how you're going to recruit that many uh, volunteers or if you're going to hire somebody like Patrick is suggesting that's going to cost more money and hire them to do what um, you know again you really don't know that yet until you try it for a week and expand on on the on the uh, on the current program that we have right now so those those are my thoughts Larry anything to add or you don't have to just um no no i just i think that um basically best should come back with a very complete you know uh, uh proposal for us and how how it's just gonna how, how you're gonna pull it off and and uh i i like it a lot i'm ready to fund it as soon as i you know there's a comfort level with that a, a, a process thing i was on our website two days ago was it and this document wasn't there. Correct. So these things get put up there. Is there, is there a way that when something gets added uh, for us who don't look at it every day, that just send out to the to the EDC, something's been added to the website or something? I think Sally, Sally has been pushing me to, to be more orderly and, and do things in advance. And I think I'm the bottleneck. So I think what we'll do going forward is we'll set a date in advance and then the materials will just be, from that date onwards, we won't add new materials. And I think I've, I'll take responsibility for this. I think I've been, I've been. Well, I don't mind the add the addition of new material, but it's, it, it's just a, 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 you know, it's a mass what, email just to to all EDC members. Uh, look at the website. We just added something. Right. Well, I think Sally does that whenever she posts it. I'm not sure this was posted on the website yet. Well, I, I thought it was. Just, no, no. Oh, yeah. Sally does that whenever she. All of you. Yeah. I think the idea of a mass email is a good one because uh, that's how we. That's how we do it with the working group for for the marketing working group. When something new is coming out, we we just send it to everybody, and that way there's no worry about I got to go somewhere to find it. You know, whoever's responsible for the document sends us to us all. You know, well, the problem is, is it's it's Sally it on the website for legal and, and appropriate reasons, but you know, for us to be working through ideas, I think just let's just create a, a email chain. Well, there's a Sally. Go ahead. You're okay I was with just going to say that. I mean, I need to. You need to remember to send things to me. I'm glad to post anything. It's not hard to do, um, and we can think about the best way to let people know when there's new items added. But we also have a meeting. We have a regular set of documents for all the documents that have been discussed at meetings. Those get archived, and then there's a current file. So we'll just have to figure out if that system still works. Let me, you know, if I, the, if I'm the only one that is, um, you know, no. wants to hold off until for another week until there's a, 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 a more robust plan. I, no, I, I, I'd, I'd like to wait a week just to hear that Beth can pull it off, which I'm sure you can, Beth. But I'd love you to have the time to just a week's not going to 
great idea. Let's just make it happen in a week and say, yeah, we can do it. Solidify the thinking. I think that's really what it is. It's, it's and Patrick, I, I wanted to clarify, maybe we weren't clear when we said wassail month, we don't mean that these things are happening every day of the week. Right. Just, just it would week. be weekends. So it would only be six days. So actually doing two weekends a week and another weekend is more than what we were even planning. We were planning two days for the first three weekends. Two, two, you were planning okay. two, I'm, two, I'm good two. either way, but my idea is, let's think from a marketing standpoint, whether it's Wassel Week or Wassel Weekends. Uh, Amen, know, got it. Yeah, it right. just, we, we, the idea is economic development. So as long as we think of it, that we can promote it, then I'm, I'm cool either I way. I like that. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, just a logistic, all right. So then I'm, does it, I'd like to take it back. I'm going to withdraw it at the moment. Well, not. Yeah. Uh, okay. Serious. Okay. I'll take it back. You want to? You want to? You want to have the week to consider it. So, okay. Okay. So, um, the, the because the, because this is not an annual meeting grant, we need six votes to approve it. So, what I will do is send out. I'll I'll send out a a, a doodle poll tomorrow. Uh, to pick a day a week from now, a couple of days that are about a week from now, but still give us enough time to get it to the select board. If, if not precisely on your deadline, then pretty much you know four or five days in advance, at least, if not seven days. And, but we need, we need at least six people to be at that meeting. So um, I'm just kind of giving everyone a heads up that, that, and again, I think this will be a relatively short meeting. It'll be the only item on the agenda. Um, and we've, I think, had a good sense of what of what the issues are and what the scope is. And I think every, I haven't heard anyone say, and I hope you don't misunderstand my views. I think we all think this is this would be great <laughs> for Wassel and for the future for building on it. It's exactly what the events group should be trying to catalyze if we can execute it without, say, burning down another building or something of that sort. So. Um, so just heads up, we're going to need people to come, you know, you're going to need to come to, to the meeting. We're going to need at least six people if everyone votes yes for it. So, okay. Any other We can, last do, it. We can do it via Zoom, right, John? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think we have to, we're required now to have a physical presence. So I could, I could just be, I can be here and I'll be here and anybody who wants to be here can be, but it can all be done by Zoom. Okay, um, we just got a few more minutes left, but let's let's. Oh, we have the second one. Oh, the I'm sorry. One is different. Yeah. Completely. Right. Do you want to present the second one? Yes. yes. Good, good point. Thank you. And I printed them out. I did not. Yeah. We're, we're, from a process point of view, we're going to do the same thing. I think we'll consider it next week. But just give us the explanation. So, in order to expand Wassel, you have to have some <laughs> infrastructure in place. And as you might have noticed with the, the taste of Woodstock, we're the last three weeks in town, there is no parking. And so one of the things that, that I would like is to hire two shuttle buses to get people to the high school. We've done this in the past. Um, and my request is $2,000, up to $2,000 for that. And the other piece of this request is to um, do the holiday lights on the weekend before Thanksgiving so that we get the lights up and it starts looking festive by Thanksgiving. We have ordered the lights with the good faith that we'll find the money somewhere. It is not in the chamber budget. Um, we coordinate with chippers and with timber tenders at this point who donate several thousand dollars worth of time to string the lights. But it's pretty vital to the Woodstock Village. So the request is for up to $5,000. $2,000 for the for, to rent the bus, to hire the buses, and three thousand dollars to buy the lights, and you won't, you have to buy them every year. Is that you right? Have to buy them every year. Okay. I, does anyone have any? We can again. Now we can digest this and discuss it next week. But does anyone have any questions about what the proposal is? Can I just ask? Just this is why do we have to buy lights every year? 
Is it not possible to store them? Just out of no. curiosity. No, we have tried. We've had okay. board members come and take them down and roll them. I mean, think about your own holiday lights and think about yeah. where <laughs> right. a box truck that's backing into the post office takes them out or a box truck that's parked next to Bentley's takes them out. All right. Just imagine yeah. the amount of time you have to figure out get the lights to work to find which bulb is out. Exactly. Yeah, no. Okay. Fair enough. Just wondering. Thank you. All right. So we understand the proposal. So, I got one uh, question. Uh, yeah. The, 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 the buses to the high school are for Wassel weekend. Yes? Just for Saturday. Just for Saturday. for Saturday. Saturday. Okay. That's and right. Back and forth from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Okay, that, that's was my only question. Yes, it's only that. Okay, so I think we understand it. We'll, we'll consider it as from a funding point of view next week. And again, we have the same six vote thing. Michael, is there anything else on the, or Deborah, anything else on the events working group? We're gonna now go to go see updates from the working groups quickly. Are, anything else from the events working group that you wanna mention? Not that I can think of. Deb, you got anything? Deborah? No, okay. Um, marketing working group, Patrick, anything, or, or Sally, anything you want to report, or sorry, Patrick and Beth, anything you want to report? Yep, we, uh, we signed the contract uh, with class four. Uh, we had the initial input meeting to determine uh, what uh, events, things that we want to shoot uh, for uh, uh, photography and video. Uh, we just got that list. We're actually reviewing it. The working group is going to review it tomorrow. We have our, our meeting set up uh, and uh, we're, you know, on our way, we're, we're getting everything started. So th th that's going well. Uh, and then uh, the, I don't know if up on the, on the site are the uh, stats for how the website's doing. Uh, and I'll just point out a couple of quick things. Uh, we're seeing lots of growth on Instagram uh, and equally uh, Facebook. Uh, and where we passed the 12,000, I think, Mark, or no, no not, we're at 13.3 or 13.1 now. So uh, people are finding us, they're seeing it, they're liking it. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, everything is, is going well right now. So that, that's kind of where we are at this point. Yeah, I just want to mention just some of the statistics, 42% year over year growth in, in users, 38% in page views, 30% in new users. I mean, these are is really good growth. This is website growth. So it shouldn't be, well, maybe it is affected by COVID, but this is September over September. So yeah. I think it's pretty impressive. So, okay. Also, everyone, if, if they're not looking or not seeing the emails in the, uh, uh, in the posts, uh, you know, Jen uh, Schmitzky is doing a fantastic job at writing these and putting them up. And what's really nice is a lot of them are uh, what I call forever, forever types of information that gets you know used uh, on a regular basis. So from a Google search engine standpoint, and and you know from a marketing standpoint, that type of uh, content is really helpful. Beth, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I just want to say that Class Four was here um, because they're working through the Woodstock Inn, but they did pop over at my request because not only does John have the perfect house, he has the perfect trees during foliage. I, my house? Yes, your house. <laughs> because we have the perfect trees and they did come and do uh, quite a bit of shots uh, on the market on the green Wednesday, which was a perfect day mm -hmm. with the trees and the, the nice. vendors that were there and the number of people. So um, oh, well, we were very pleased with, with that. All right, it's great. Okay. One other thing, John, uh, to, I forgot to mention. Uh, we are coordinating our shoots also with the, the uh, Woodstock Inn Resort. So that with the idea that uh, between the two groups, we can get uh, significantly more content for our budget. So, you know, we're not both shooting the same things. Uh, we're going to be sharing some of the content and so forth so that we can maximize our budget. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Housing, Jill? Um, so it's a very quick update. We are 
we have a group that includes John and Devon and Sally and several other people. And we meet every week and we're continuing to work on these programs. Um, the two main programs that we're doing are looking at an incentive program to get people to switch their short-term rentals to long-term rentals. And then working on um, a program to encourage people to build accessory dwelling units. Um, so we should be ready to report to you to give you a good idea of what, what we hope for in December. We might be able to update you with something before then, but we're going to be ready for your um, grant application process in January. And I say January because I would, I would support moving ahead and not delaying your, the grant program. All right. Thanks. Any questions about any of the ones events, marketing, or housing before we go to the other? No? Okay. Um, John, you might mention a visit we made to Rutland, and I thought that was pretty successful. I don't uh, know from it anyway. Yeah, we, we, just briefly, we um, I have I did bring that up in the housing working group, I think. Um, we uh, uh, Butch Sutherland, Jody Natalie, and I uh, went to Rutland to meet with a developer who has developed second floor housing on top of, you know, in, in the downtown area. Um, and yeah, and I think it was, it, it's a little bit of a different situation that was, uh, but, um, but the basic concept that we have talked about, that the housing group has talked about this, but has not prioritized it only because we think, I think it's fair to say, Jill, that the two things that you mentioned we think are lower hanging fruit basically. And so mm -hmm. we're trying to start with those, but the idea of second floor development is definitely something that we should be, for housing is definitely something that we should be considering. Mm -hmm. And I think eventually will, we're just, there's only so many things you can do at once. So yeah. sorry, Jill. We I, put it in our longer term bucket. So we want to go for, like John said, we want to go for these first. And even within these programs go for the low hanging fruit. So that something actually happens in 2022. Okay, uh, Larry, for um, the attracting new businesses and um, yeah, we uh, mainly it's been Stuart uh, Matthews and myself have been working on um, setting up uh, um, uh, basic criteria. Um, we've um, we're meeting with the director of the Green Mountain Development Corporation on the 18th. Oh, excuse me, the 21st to see what they can do to to assist us in attracting. Uh, New business. They also have some, have some programs that are include some incentives that we'd like to look at. Um, we're trying to identify all the commercial properties in town. The, of it, there, the, a lot of them are obvious, but there are some properties that um, uh, so this is so that if we, when we contact uh, uh, prospective businesses, we can be up to date on where they might put their businesses. Um, and there are, uh, I've met with Neil Leitner and gone through some of the, or most of the mapping and we're trying to identify perhaps some places like, uh, out by the rainbow school across the way. That's, a, that's actually a, a light industrial zone. When it would, you know, a lot of people didn't know that you could actually put a business in there and there are a couple of other places. <laughs> anyway, we're trying to do that. I also, um, one, one of the uh, back, you recall, we had that group from uh, Williams College that uh, went, identified um, towns that were successful in bringing in new business. And one of the ways they did it was uh, uh, a couple of the towns had these uh, business plan uh, competitions where they basically solicit uh, uh, new ideas, people who wanted to, to take their ideas and, and bring them to fruition. Um, and then work through that to with funding uh, so that they bring uh, a new business into town. And um, maybe some of you saw Dover, Vermont, just uh, a little while ago initiated this with a $20,000 prize for the best business plan with the idea that the uh, business would, uh, they have some open uh, uh, storefronts, uh, uh, businesses, uh, buildings mm -hmm. that, that they wanted to fill. And so they're trying to, to uh, jumpstart a little interest in that. And uh, I, uh, uh, I put on 
on the on the website, you'll see a link. They've done a tremendous job. They have a very thorough rubric for, for uh, analyzing these plans. And um, I talked to the, they have a director of the EDC down there. They have a 1% option tax and whatever. Um, and they have Mount Snow, so they got a lot of money. Uh, but they they uh, they got 12 very good uh, uh, proposed business plans. They've honed it down to five. They have a bunch of judges and they have mentors that are know, know exactly much more about that running getting a business plan and running these kinds of businesses. Anyway, um, they're very excited about it. They think it's going to be very fruitful, and I think probably our committee will come to uh, to the full EDC with a with a. Uh, uh, proposal that we do this perhaps uh, or probably looking to do uh, partially for the EDC and partially through uh, trying to uh, find some some uh, private funding. That's about it. Fantastic. Okay. Right. Any uh, any questions on any of the working groups? Anything we haven't discussed? Larry, I love the work that you did on this. On uh, the, the the whole concept of that, I think is very interesting. <laughs> <coughs> You know, I agree. Yeah. All right. Any any other comments? Anyone here? I realized, by the way, that we did not. I did not post on the listserv that we were meeting, yeah. which is why it's just the core group and not the hangers on that come in, so forth. So, thank you for the core group who participated. You're all members of the core group. All right. If there are no, if there are no other, any other comments. No, if not, okay, can we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. There a second? Joe, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right, we are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Very everyone. good discussion. Yeah. Hangers on, John. <laughs> <laughs>